Johns Hopkins School of Education Special Education Virtual Information Session. My name is Sian John. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions here at the Johns Hopkins School of Education. Also presenting today, I have my colleague from the Office of Admissions, and she will introduce herself. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tanya McMillan. I am an admissions coordinator here at the School of Education. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. Also presenting today, we have a faculty member of the special education program, Dr. Rebecca Cruz, joining us today. Please note today's webinar is being recorded. We will be able to share a link with you after the event is complete within one week. There will be a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Please type your question in the Q&A box and we will answer your questions. I would like to share the agenda for today's webinar. We will start the presentation sharing an overview of the Johns Hopkins School of Education. Then Dr. Cruz will go over details of the special education programs here at SOE. Lastly, we'll cover admissions requirements, go over financial aid and scholarship, and finally leave the floor open for questions at the end. And to start, we are one of nine schools at Johns Hopkins University. We began offering college courses for teachers in 1909 and then became our own school in 2007. We are proud to share that the Johns Hopkins School of Education is consistently ranked one of the top schools in education by the US News and World Report. And also here on the slide, you'll see some fast facts about our school. For school enrollment, we have approximately 1,741 students. And we offer 25 graduate programs, which includes our doctoral, master's, and graduate certificate programs. And we do also have a strong network of over 24,000 SOE alums. And also here on this slide, you'll see our special education faculty members, Dr. Rebecca Cruz, Dr. Tamara Martyr, and Dr. Alexander Shelton. And presenting today, we have Dr. Rebecca Cruz. Dr. Cruz joined uh, JHUSOE in 2021. Her research focuses on examining disproportionately in special education and discipline and in redefining the concept of inclusion from a perspective that considers disability not as an individual trait, but as a product of political, social, and historical practices. And for prior experience, Dr. Cruz worked in middle and high school settings to develop co-teaching and inclusion models. And at this time, I will hand the floor over to Dr. Cruz. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. It's really good to be here um, talking to you today. So I'm going to talk a little bit about our program and kind of our mission and vision. Um, a couple of things to note before we start here is that one of the key drivers of our program and one of the goals that we aim to achieve is this idea that the U.S. is really facing a critical shortage of special education teachers. And this has been the case for a lot of years now, although, um, you know, with the pandemic, this has really been exacerbated as of late with almost every state in the United States um, reporting shortages. And so really aiming to kind of fill this gap and, and make sure that we're training really highly qualified, inclusive, equity-oriented special educators to fill some of these gaps. So um, that's sort of the, the vision and the mission and the goal. Um, we're also sort of aiming to embed research into this practice. And so all of the folks that we send out into the field to do this work are working from a really um, research-based orientation. So we have three primary pathways right now. We've got a mild to moderate um, credential program for students with disabilities. We've got a severe disabilities with an autism focus. And then we've got a severe disabilities with an ABA focus. I'll talk about all three of these pathways um, here in a moment, but and I'll give you the contact information for some of the key faculty that oversee these programs. They're really focused today on the mild to moderate disabilities pathway. So right now, um, we currently offer courses in the summer, fall, and spring. So um, if you were to enroll in our program, you would be taking coursework in all of those terms. Um, the coursework is really set up to meet the needs of working professionals. So a lot of our students are working already in classrooms on emergency credentials, or they have full-time employment. 
So our coursework is set up to meet those needs. A lot of our face-to-face -face instruction happens in the evenings. Um, a lot of our summer instruction happens uh, online. We're kind of sort of migrating our coursework that way. Um, our face-to-face -face coursework happens at the Applied Physics Lab, which is located in Laurel, Maryland. Um, and uh, yeah, so our, our, our coursework is, uh, a co we use kind of a cohort model. So everybody who enters the program together kind of follows the same structure. It's, a, it's designed to be a two-year pathway. Um, some folks completed in three years. Uh, we have had a few folks who want to take one course at a time and complete it in five, although that's pretty rare. And then we do have one or two folks who've really wanted to come in and take a ton of coursework all at once and complete it in one year. So that is possible. It's a huge challenge, though. It's really designed to be a two-year program. So some of the milestones that you would complete if you were to enter our program, we have um, all of our candidates getting a credential we would complete the Praxis II assessment in special education and the Praxis II assessment in reading. And we've got some supports set up to help you with that process. We have a comprehensive exam as one of our milestones to graduate with your master's degree. Um, and then we've got these two sort of culminating projects. One of them is the culminating project that happens at the end of our culminating internship. Um, and that is for folks who are seeking Maryland State certification. And then we've got a graduate project and presentation option for those who really want a really a research focused program. You can choose to do this if you're getting a credential in master's, or you can choose to do this if you're just getting a master's and you don't need the Maryland State certification. And what this project is, is if you opt into it, it helps you kind of prepare yourself to either be a teacher leader or get you prepared for further grad work if you want to do an EDD or a PhD program. It gives you a, a solid research practice base to work from. So these are some of our, our key milestones. We can talk more about that if you have questions. So a little bit about our autism focus um, program. So this is meant for folks who want to gain expertise in specialized instruction to meet the educational needs of students identified with autism spectrum disorders in the K-12 school system. It consists of 36 credit hours of coursework, um, and it's 12 courses, and it's about half online and half in person, and it includes one applied internship that typically happens at the end of the program. It's meant to be a two-year program, um, and the key contact for this program would be Dr. Martyr. Her contact info is here, and she's always happy to answer questions and talk with you if you're thinking about this option. And here's just a little bit of the coursework that you would take if you were in that program. So the, the courses that are listed with an asterisk, those are online courses. Um, and what these courses are really meant to do is help you apply research-based understandings of autism spectrum disorders to practice. So in, a, in the instructional planning and management course, for example, you might work on you know, lesson planning, evidence-based practices to support students in inclusive settings who have autism spectrum disorders. So uh, it is designed for um, folks who either are parents of students who have autism or certified educators. Uh, sorry, this is the graduate certificate in autism, not the master's. Um, anyone can access this program really. And it's meant for folks who want to gain an understanding of practical knowledge for supporting children and adults diagnosed with autism. This is an 18 credit certificate and it's all online. So we have a lot of folks who are already teachers in the field that are working in schools who just want this sort of added on certificate for you know, career purposes or just to serve their students better. Um, it really is meant to address a wide range of competencies that are necessary to provide effective educational programming for students with autism and other pervasive developmental disorders. Again, you can contact Dr. Martyr for more information on this program. <laughs> uh, and like I said, I, um, Dr. Shelton and I really oversee this um, mild to moderate disabilities focused master's in special education. And so that's the program that I can answer, you know, your specific questions related to this, but it's meant for folks who want to gain expertise in specialized instruction to meet educational needs of students with a wide range of disabilities in a wide range of educational settings. Um, and like I said, we really do have a um, 
the focus on rejecting deficit-oriented assumptions about students, about inclusive frameworks. That is sort of a practice that we're, we're trying to embrace in our program. Um, when you enroll in the program, you would select if you're going for Maryland State Department of Education approval for a credential, either elementary, middle, or secondary adult. So if you want to serve students in grades one through eight, you'd select elementary, six through 12, you would select secondary. A lot of the coursework is the same, but there are a few courses that are different based on which one of those credentials that you're seeking. And you would take some of our specific methods courses. We have um, math curriculum and instruction. We've got spoken and written language, um, and then some specific work around transition behavior management. Those are all kind of from our classroom proactive behavior supports and applied behavior programming. It is a 39 credit coursework program right now. There are 13 courses. There are two internships. So we have an induction internship and a culminating internship. It's typically completed within two years. <clears throat> so here are, uh, this is just a sample of the courses that we offer in this program. Um, and again, the ones with asterisks are online. There are actually a couple more of these. I think that the spoken and written and the collaborative programming courses are typically offered in the summer and we have transitioned those to be online courses because we have a lot of folks who are either teaching summer school or they you know, wanna go on vacation with their families but they can still do their coursework over the summer in an online format. And so kind of one of the things that we're working on shifting. Um, but like, for example, in some of these courses, like if you were taking the legal aspects course, you would learn all about all of the key requirements to create and implement a legally defensible IEP. You would learn about how students, how you would consider placing students in the least restrictive environment so that they can be as included as possible. Those kinds of issues are some of the things that you would learn throughout the coursework in the program. So, and then we have another program and Dr. Shelton is the main um, contact for this, but this is for those folks who are seeking the um, master's in special education with the mild to moderate disabilities pathway. So it's the same program, but it's operated through Montgomery County Public Schools. This is just a partnership program that we have. It's called Set It. It's a two-year program. So in the other programs that I've described, you have the option to go at a little bit slower pace or a little bit faster pace. The Set It program is really designed to be a two-year cohort approach. So all Set It candidates complete a prescribed series of courses together in the same pathway, and it's meant to take two years. So if you already um, are working as a paraprofessional for Montgomery County Public Schools, then you could be eligible for some um, salary and benefits as a Montgomery County public schools employee, and they provide some partial tuition support. So this is a good way to kind of make the program a little bit more affordable. Um, we work in partnership with, with this district in order to offer that option. And like I said, Dr. Shelton is the primary contact for that program. And then just a kind of a couple of notes about what kind of makes a really good candidate for our program. So for those who are seeking an MMD focus, um, if you're looking for initial special education certification through a state approved program, um, this is a good option for you, especially if you want to do the graduate project research option and really look towards being like a teacher leader or do a uh, future graduate work. For those who want an autism focus, if you're looking to acquire the skills that support students with autism and other severe disabilities in the K-12 setting. So if you're already certified and you want this sort of um, credential add-on, then this is a really good option for you. You have to be able to commit to two years of really intensive graduate coursework. I think that, um, you know, it's easy to think that this is because it's, it's after work hours that maybe you can just kind of take a, do a couple of things at a time, but it is really intensive graduate work. So it takes a lot of commitment. Um, so, and then able to demonstrate all of the admissions requirements that I think we're going to talk about here in a couple of slides. Thank you so much, Dr. Cruz. So yes, now we are going to discuss admission requirements uh, for the program. Uh, for the program, a 3.0 or better cumulative undergraduate grade point average is preferred. Applicants must also submit a completed application, which can be found on our website. The application fee is $80. Uh, 
Additionally, all official transcripts are required from all post-secondary institutions that you may have attended. We require all official transcripts, including those from institutions where you may not have earned a degree. An essay and a current resume is also an admission requirement for the program, as well as two letters of recommendation, and those should come from individuals who can speak to your work in the field of special education. For the mild to moderate programs, testing uh, scores are required if your grade point average is less than 3.0. Please visit the Maryland Department of Education website for listing of specific tests that are accepted. And lastly, an interview is required as well for applicants who meet admission requirements. Those uh, persons will be asked to interview in person via Zoom or by phone to ensure that their goals align with the program's goals before an offer of admission is made. For international students, if your degree was completed outside of the United States, please keep in mind that you will need to complete a course by course credential evaluation. Additional information about those requirements can be found on our school's website. For those uh, students that um, are also international, please note that both programs offer part-time enrollment only. Admission is not open to international applicants that may be seeking an F1 or J1 visa for this program. On this slide, you will see our current tuition fees. Um, the current tuition for the School of Education is 918 per credit for face-to-face -face courses and 972 plus a $20 per credit technology fee for online courses. In addition, the registration fee is $175 per semester and there's an initial application fee when you're applying of $80 when you submit your application. For additional details on tuition and fees, please also visit our School of Education website as well. If you're interested in applying for financial aid, we strongly encourage you to apply for federal financial aid when you start your online application. You may also complete a FAFSA form separately if you do plan on applying for financial aid. You will also find here external resources for funding uh, via scholarship.com and teacher.org. Also, the School of Education offers a limited number of partial need-based institutional scholarships each year as well. And these awards range from $500 to $3,000 per semester and are applied to tuition expenses beginning in the fall semester. Please keep in mind to apply for the School of Education endowed scholarships. Students that apply for those scholarships must have a FAFSA form on file as well. To learn if you do qualify for the endowed scholarship or have any questions regarding financial aid, please visit the financial aid section of our school's website. At this time, we'd like to open up the floor for questions. Please type your questions in the chat box and we'll be sure to answer those questions and read them aloud as well. The first question we have is for the SEDIT program, do you have to already be an employee of MCPS or can the program help find a placement for candidates, particularly candidates who are coming out of state? Yeah, thanks for the question, Jada. It's a, a good question. And I think that, so typically candidates would already have employment in MCPS in order to qualify for SEDIT. That being said, the reason that we partner with MCPS is because like everywhere in the state of Maryland and in the country, they are experiencing a lot of the shortages that we talked about in some of these earlier slides. And so um, it isn't too hard to find employment there if you're in the special education field. And I would recommend that you reach out to Dr. Shelton now, and she can give you a little bit more information and kind of guide you to the right people. So definitely reach out. Um, she's always happy to, to help. Thank you, Dr. Cruz. The next question that we have is the graduate project and presentation milestone more tailored for students thinking of an EDD or a psychology doctorate or a PhD. For the doctorate programs at SOE, is it recommended to get a master's degree beforehand? Yeah, thank you for these questions. Um, that's a really good uh, question. So Typically for the Hopkins EDD and PhD programs, you have to have a master's coming into those. 
Um, and the way that we've set up the graduate project is that it's really meant to just help give you a sense of how to conduct research. So it's set up as like a semester long research project. And so a lot of folks that we have doing those projects do like a literature review or some survey research. So it's not really intensive like dissertation style research, but it's enough that you would be able to kind of take that piece and submit it to journals and kind of have that on your CV. And so it does kind of help give you, uh, it gives you a leg up if you want to apply for some of those um, EDD or PhD programs. I will tell you that it's very open and the way that you approach it is kind of up to you and the faculty that you work with. Right now, I am typically the faculty that folks work with when they want to do graduate programs. And if you want to do an EDD, then we're happy to help you tailor that more to be like a professional problem of practice type research. So you'd be doing more action research or something that kind of sets you up for doing a practitioner based doctoral program. And if you're interested in PhD work, then we can help you set up um, your work to be a little bit more research focused and a little bit more theoretical. So it's it's very open and it's very tailored to suit your needs. That's one of the better features of our program, I think, in terms of that particular aspect of it. Did I answer that question in full? <laughs> Dr. Cruz, thank you so much. Uh, we have a couple more pick, uh, really good questions. Um, the next one is, what if you're a special education teacher, but don't yet have the license? Which program would you recommend? Yeah, so especially if you're working in um, a Maryland school, um, and you have like an emergency credential or something like that, and you're just trying to get the full credential. So the MMD pathway is a really good option um, if you're looking to work in sort of these mild to moderate settings. So if you're looking to do like more moderate to severe work, our program is geared for folks who want to do co-teaching, who are doing a lot more inclusive models, um, you know, who are doing working with a more moderate, mild to moderate population. So um, that's what I would recommend. And then again, you know, you kind of pick the like the grade level that you want to work with. So in Maryland, you have to select um, elementary or secondary. So kind of pick the one that aligns with what you're already doing or what you want to be doing. Because if you end up doing your internships in the classroom where you work, it will only count towards your certification if it matches the grade level that you that you want to work in. So for example, sometimes we have folks who are working in preschools and they want to do, you know, the secondary credential and the internship, that would mean that you would have to do an internship placement somewhere other than your place of employment because the age, the grade level doesn't match. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. I can clarify if, if not. Exam. Prior to applying, would I need to have the Praxis One assessment completed? I only recently got into the special education job field since August. I am so sorry that I don't actually know the answer to that question. <laughs> um, that would actually, I think, be a question for either Julie Taylor, who is our program administrator, or for Camilla. Um, I think that their contact information is in, in this slide deck. Mm -hmm. Just so everyone has the contact information for Julie Taylor. Yeah, and sorry that I am unfamiliar. I don't know. But if you also, if you shoot me an email, I'm happy to help you track down that information. I think typically folks who enter our program already have that Praxis One completed, but I don't know if it's a requirement. So it's a good question. Any programs you all participate in and pertaining to Howard County Public School staff? Unfortunately, at this time, we don't have any partnerships with Howard County. We used to have many years ago, um, and we had uh, this sort of paraprofessional pipeline grant that was going on. Um, the state of Maryland redesigned how they were allocating those funds, and so it, it's not really, we can't accept folks into that program at the moment. We do, however, have folks who are working in Howard County Public Schools who do our program. And so we do have contacts. And if you want to ultimately work there, um, we do have places that we can put you in an internship if you need a placement in Howard County. So currently, no, nothing like the SEDIT that's operating with Montgomery County, though, unfortunately. 
Thank you, Dr. Cruz. Um, another um, one question I had, it's a frequently asked question, and also I saw some students who joined us a little later. Uh, where are the classes offered um, for the mild to moderate program? Yeah, uh, so currently about uh, a little bit more than half of our classes are face-to-face -face classes, and then the rest are online classes that happen either via Zoom or they happen asynchronously on Canvas. The face-to-face -face classes happen at the Applied Physics Lab in Laurel, Maryland. So you don't have to come in and travel and commute into Baltimore um, to our Homewood campus. There is a lot of open parking and a Chick-fil-A, I have been told, <laughs> out there by the by the Applied Physics Lab. So that's where all of our face-to-face our -face classes happen. So the Chick-fil-A is important because if you get done with work and you want to grab dinner, and then you can go to class. <laughs> so my students tell me questions today, but it looks like we don't have any more questions. Um, here on this slide, we have some important contact information. Any admissions related questions, please reach out to my colleague, Tanya McMillan. Her email address and phone number is on this slide. Any program related questions, uh, please reach out to Julie Taylor and Julie's email address is on this slide. Thank you again for your interest in the Johns Hopkins School of Education. Thank you to Dr. Cruz for the wonderful presentation. We look forward to hearing from you. Have a wonderful evening, everyone.